Hello and welcome to VC Circle podcast. I'm your host Joseph Rai. In this episode, we have a special guest, Mr. Harsh Mariwala, founder and chairman of one of India's major consumer goods companies, Marico. Mr. Mariwala has also been involved in fostering corporate and startup innovation in the country through Marico Innovation Foundation, a non-profit organization started in 2003. The foundation has advocated the cause of startups through its initiatives such as awards that help startups showcase innovation and scale-up program that offers mentorship and networking services to startups. We'll talk about all this and also get some perspective from Mr. Mariwala on the emerging consumer brands in the country that are backed by venture capital firms. Hi, Mr. Mariwala. A warm welcome Hi. to you and thank you for speaking with us. Thank you. Thank you. So, Marico Innovation Foundation has been involved with the startup ecosystem since 2003. Tell yes. us how you think the startup ecosystem in India has evolved and is it easy to become an entrepreneur today than say 20 or even 10 years back? Uh Yes, it has evolved to answer very simplistically, but at the same time, uh, it's uh, moving on in the right direction. Uh, mm-hmm. I would have, I would have liked the pace to be much much higher, but nonetheless, I think uh, let it take its time because this kind of ecosystem cannot be started in a, a in a very short uh, span. So, I think it has to get evolved, and for it to really flourish you need many many things in place starting with the government policies which uh, which uh, move towards the ease of doing business to uh, capital providers and now we have a full range of capital providers in the country starting with uh, early stage investing to to private equity players mm-hmm. and then you need uh, a lot of technology inputs you need incubation hubs mm-hmm. you need uh, people who can guide entrepreneurs to scale up to uh, look at their model so consultants professors uh, also play an important role and most importantly the society has to support entrepreneurs you know okay and i think in india uh, there is uh, it's very hierarchical society in indian society and to that extent uh, the society does not uh, take failure in the right uh, spirit and okay. uh, it's okay to fail you know i think most entrepreneurs have failed and then they succeeded but uh, mm-hmm. uh, the parents don't want their children or to have the perception that the children have failed and that may that may reduce risk taking that may reduce experimentation and prototyping and to me the society has to accept that the failure is a part and parcel of the entrepreneurial journey and i think okay. if that happens then uh, i think they will see more and more entrepreneurs uh, plunging into starting a new business there is always a backup option if you have studied uh, in terms of getting starting a cor- corporate career mm-hmm. but increasingly more and more students are now looking at uh, starting on their own which sign mm-hmm. because entrepreneurs add a lot of value to all the stakeholders and uh, i think the key uh, reason why many people are stepping into this is they have seen uh, some huge successes of unicorns which have come up out of nowhere and uh, i mean company like byju's have a valuation of something like 11 billion dollars you know unimaginable you know mm-hmm. so i mean so you there has been a lot of wealth creation and i think that is what is spurring more and more youngsters to look at uh, starting on their own and leverage technology to start a new business mm-hmm. you mentioned about how government can also play a more important role to help the yes, startup yes. ecosystem grow what True. steps do you think the government can take so i think apart from giving incentives on the fiscal front and the taxation front uh, i think the ease of doing business whether it's to get a license and that will vary depending on the state you are in to the labor laws the land laws if you have to put up a factory uh judicial system uh delays in uh, you know resolving disputes i think all these to be added and then you know also right pricing because if you are manufacturing then you know to that extent your input cost whether it's power or uh, water is much much higher compared to the global standards you know mm-hmm. uh, so i think one has to look at uh, um, putting indian entrepreneurs in terms of giving them services at the right costs so that okay. they are able to compete globally mm-hmm. okay and yeah. also you know they say that corporate participation in the indian startup ecosystem is still considered to be minimal in the country right so Do you subscribe to this view <clears throat> 
see to some extent the corporates have their own agenda to drive and to expect mm -hmm. them to to play that role of holding hands of entrepreneurs i don't think it's fair okay. now uh, it all depends on the corporate if some corporates have started some venture capital uh, wing um, right. uh, they are the ones who are actually helping entrepreneurs scale up Mm -hmm. but beyond a point i don't think one should look at too much of corporates corporates at an individual level you know ceos ex ceos they can play a mentoring role a coaching role but uh, for a corporate which is running a business uh, they have to look at their own business issues you know mm -hmm. so that uh, i think that may have certain limitations but those who are a part of the ecosystem once they retire mm -hmm. i've seen huge amount of uh, desire for ex ceos to give something back to the society and they are not even expecting uh, uh remuneration in this and i think that's where uh, we need to gather on one side ceos who can be mentors and other side those entrepreneurs who want that that advice from ceos and you know have the right uh, matches in terms of the capabilities of the ceo as well as what is expected by the by the entrepreneurs and you'll see a huge thriving uh, mentorship coaching kind of uh, <clears throat> uh generation of uh, whole relationships over okay. a period of time but i think somebody has to actually get hold of all those who retire and you know those who to find out from them what are their strengths uh, and where would they be able to add value and would they expect something in return and at the same time uh, and identify with entrepreneurs and in my own small way i have started uh, ascent which is uh, an organization which is helping entrepreneurs scale up right and uh, based on peer to peer learning platform we have 700 entrepreneurs looking for us and we have started this uh, maybe a year back year and a half back in facing very good response and any ceos i ask for they are more than willing to do this you know uh, without expecting anything because they want to give something back to the society so the marico innovation foundation <laughs> acknowledges startups that are making breakthrough innovations right yes, so what kind yes. of innovations in the ecosystem has really excited the foundation this year so this year we have our awards coming up on the 9th of october which is next friday mm -hmm. and this was an award function which was planned for 17th march 2020 but because of pandemic we had to postpone that event at the last moment it's a physical event which is normally held in bombay at the dome and it's a much sought after event because we have uh, on average about 1000 people attending that event and this year we had 1000 registrants unfortunately we had to cancel now we have opened up on the <clears throat> on the virtual mm -hmm. to the webinar and we expect at least 5000 people to join and if anybody wants to join most welcome to to log in and <clears throat> and join and register there is no cost attached to it mm -hmm. but clearly we have seen uh, uh, award entries which are uh, uh, game changers which are uh, involved in the area of uh, social good and also on business so we have i think six uh, winners and plus two game changer awards and i think all that will be talked about in our award function it's a very uh, it's a learning event it's not really like a typical award function so mm -hmm. it's very important that uh, we provide the right kind of a <clears throat> platform to these innovators at the same time those who are listening they will get really charged mm -hmm. by what these innovators have to say it's very it's a very feel good kind of a award function and not really a, like a typical award function you know okay so from which segments of the ecosystem do you see most of the innovation happening so i think it it cuts across but i think we are primarily looking at medium and small enterprise of course the larger companies are doing their innovation but we see that small medium enterprises i think many of the entry barriers have been broken and that's what is uh, what is making them innovative and the biggest challenge they have is i think they are uh, struggling for for scaling up because innovative ideas have to show growth you know mm -hmm. and they have to be scaled up if they are at a at a nascent stage mm -hmm. then uh, then there's a problem then there's a problem that okay i think it's innovation has happened but the impact is limited so we want our our endeavor in uh, the mif is to actually help them scale up and i personally spent time with them uh, on average we work with eight to 10 organizations at a particular point of time and again we work with ex ceos mentors mm -hmm. to help them scale up so um, i mean we have some phenomenal entries this year we have an entry which is uh, for uh, scan scavengers so basically there is a lot of manual cleaning of gutters mm -hmm. right. and all that happens when somebody has to go into the gutter and this is a system where mm -hmm. you actually don't have to uh, do scavenging 
so i'm a huge benefit of uh, you know the kind of life these people lead, lead is uh, is pathetic absolutely mm-hmm. so uh, lots of innovations uh, we are we were, we identified gonja as one of the game changers and also olympic for gold quest which is actually enabling indian sportsmen to become olympic winners so you will see lots and lots of interesting uh, speakers all of them have been trained by a ted uh, trainer so the whole uh, presentation would be in terms of what is that key innovation which has happened and how it will impact rather than thanking uh, you know their father and mother and brother and sister okay. which normally happens in any in a award function so all the innovators have been trained and on average they'll speak for 6 to 7 minutes and a very focused kind of uh, speech which will leverage the innovation cool that sounds interesting yes. I'd yeah. like to talk about you know consumer brands now. So yeah. Consumer yeah. brands have received quite a significant interest from venture capital firms in India. Yes, you know this yes. has led to the birth of new domestic brands such as Peter. Sure, sure, Operas. sure. How sure. do you read this development, and do you see some of these new age consumer brands making a mark globally? Uh, I don't know about globally. I think it's maybe too early for us to say globally because these mm-hmm. are uh, consumer brands which have just come in and mm-hmm. they are. i mean they're doing in the range of 100 crore to 100 crore turn over and i think the right. key reasons why they have uh, they have surfaced now and why not earlier was basically because the two most important entry barriers which were existing earlier have uh, have vanished now so the first entry barrier in in a consumer product is sales and distribution you know okay. and uh, you needed a all india sales distribution network which meant huge amount of costs uh, and on <clears throat> for that to happen you needed a certain scale so you know it was like a chicken and egg unless you had scale you couldn't have uh, started sales and distribution and unless you have sales distribution the sales don't increase and the second is you know most of the demand generation was happening through through television uh, which again was very very expensive and both these have gone gone out because of the emergence of e-commerce as well as modern trade so now you can actually <clears throat> create a brand through e-commerce you can do only digital advertising so you don't need big money to create demand and you don't need to go to you don't need to hire a field force to go to the smaller shops and you can start selling it in in the e-commerce uh, through the e-commerce website or to try up with a modern uh, retail uh, chain and they will distribute it in their own outlet so mm-hmm. i think these two barriers have uh, vanished and that's what is enabling all these uh, newer interest in the in the consumer products which is it is very healthy cool you mentioned yeah. about scale many times you know and a lot of people actually are saying that these new age consumer brands especially in the food and beverage space space in particular they yeah. stagnate after a point you know what so, can propel their growth after a point in time is it because consumer fatigue <clears throat> so you are absolutely right that in at some stage because currently uh, because of pandemic the sales uh, through the e-commerce have grown and uh, i think it will be depending on the category it will be anywhere near 5 to 10% of the total sales of a fmcg company so to that extent you are only exploiting a small uh, uh, potential through the e-commerce you know so if you have to really scale up mm-hmm. then at some stage you have to just see whether you can do a physical distribution you know okay uh, okay either through modern trade which again forms about 15% of the turnover mm-hmm. and more importantly through the smaller shops you know so there is a pressure on them uh, to actually either to sell out okay. or to tie up with somebody else who can distribute it for them okay yeah do you also think that they need to diversify in order to you know reach the next level of growth i think diversification is a part of the growth story so of course diversification should be done but uh, if you have to win in the marketplace you have to do something unique and you have to do something which is innovative you know if you offer a me to product then the chances of a success are limited yeah. so it's very important for organizers and for uh, entrepreneurs to identify what is unique which they are offering what uh, is it innovative is it pioneering and then offer that rather than offering a me to kind of product okay you also yeah. mentioned acquisition and marico acquired male grooming startup beer to earlier this year yes yes what yes. kind of pot- what kind of potential do you see in this market so this is a brand again uh, grown by two entrepreneurs uh, started with uh, uh on selling it on website and then they wanted to grow through the the normal trade channel and i think that's what uh, pushed them to sell out to us so we mm-hmm. bought one first round of stake we bought was a was i think about 40 45% stake and balance we acquired them uh, right. early this year sometime in march april right a lot of angel yeah. investors also got a very good exit during this process yes yes, yes. yeah 
But are you also looking at some other acquisitions of startups that are backed by a VC firm, and in what space? So I think any uh, any shall I say growth oriented company will always be open to acquisitions. But that doesn't mean that whatever comes to you, you acquire. You have to carefully evaluate whether mm-hmm. uh, does it fit into your portfolio of products. Do you see further potential for these products? And mm-hmm. uh, so I think you have to evaluate and see whether. Uh, why are you doing acquisitions? But to answer your question, would we be open? Of course, we'll be open. And not mm-hmm. only us, but any other FMC companies would be open mm-hmm. to buying some brands if the brand is strong, mm-hmm. if there is something unique or innovative in that brand. Mm-hmm. But any segments? Or any? Uh, like so food? our focus is mainly in beauty and health. So we would be far more interested in beauty and health. And because of pandemic, now we want to bit of hygiene also. So I would say beauty, health, hygiene as of today would be something which would be interesting to us. Okay, I have a final question to you. Uh, what yes. would be your advice to entrepreneurs, particularly in the field of launching consumer brands? So it's a very heavily loaded question. <laughs> so it all depends on to what extent you want me to go in. But if I had to capture it in maybe two, three minutes, I would say that I think three or four things that entrepreneurs should, should do well if they have to... Uh, launch something, a new business. So first of all, as I mentioned earlier, you have to have a very strong right to win. That means whatever you're offering has to be unique. It cannot be a me too kind of an offering because in a highly competitive environment, uh, me too will not succeed. So you need to identify what is the unique thing you are bringing. Either it could be something innovative, it could be pioneering. If you're in a technology business, it could be some patent you may have or technology you may have. Or you may, if you're in service business, then could be some service standard, but something which stands out. I think if it stands out and if it is relevant to the consumer and if there's a certain critical mass in terms of demand for that particular offering, then the chances of your success are high. But before doing that, I think you need to prototype that and then test out and uh, talk to the likely consumers because... uh, I think if you can do market research, but market research has its own set of limitations. So it's better that you do a prototype on a limited scale uh, and then uh, learn from that prototype and scale it up. The second thing which you need is idea on paper looks sometimes very good, mm-hmm. but execution is also equally important. And for it to be executed well, you need very good talent. So I think the whole piece on talent in terms of attracting the right quality talent, retaining them, creating the right environment for them to to work is also very, very important. And, you know, there is a point up to which uh, an entrepreneur can do things on on his or her own side. But I think if you have very good talent, then to that extent, uh, the talent will also help them execute well. And finally, I would say that the governance party, they spread you the side. You have to do things in the right manner because if you start taking shortcuts in terms of compliances or uh, any other regulations which you have to follow, then it will hit back at you, you uh, at any particular point of time. Okay. So I would say these would be the three things I would say that they are very critical for any entrepreneur to succeed. Cool. Thank you, Mr. Mariwala. It was a pleasure speaking with you. Thank you so much, Joseph. Cool. That's all we have in this edition of VC Circle Podcast. Thank you all for listening. Take care and goodbye.